But first tonight, a war erupts in the Victorian Liberal Party over the expulsion of Moira, Moira Deeming. So let's have a look at what this is all about. Well, Deeming is a Victorian Upper House MP. You've probably never heard of her before this week, and fair enough. The teacher turned politician helped to organise a Let Women Speak protest on the SEPs of Parliament House on Saturday. The protest was advocating for the reinstatement of biological sex-based rights and it was protesting transitioning practices used on gender, non-conforming and gay minors. Today I'm actually going to read out a message from a Muslim friend of mine who was too afraid to be here because of behaviour like that. She came to Australia because she knew that in Australia human rights were advocated for strongly and she would have protection in Australia. She thought that Australia was a paradise, especially for herself as a woman. And now she is devastated to find out that she has less rights in Australia than she did back home. If the LGBTQI can have their rights, that's fine. But why does it involve taking away everybody else's rights? A controversial rally, absolutely. But nothing that you think would warrant deeming being thrown out of the Liberal Party just for standing up for women's rights. But then this happened at the protest. Around 30 neo-Nazis turned up. It was an ambush. There were Nazi salutes and other propaganda. This sparked a national ban, a national call to ban the Nazi salute and every premier across the country backed it. But it also landed Moira redeeming in the spotlight. Liberals claim she failed to attack the neo-Nazis who turned up to the rally. Deeming disputes this. In a statement, she said, nobody endorsed those Nazis, we all condemned them, but nobody listened to what the woman actually said. She said that when I was alerted to the fact that there were all these masked men coming towards us, she said she thought the trans activists had broken through the line and were about to be attacked. She said the police, for some reason that she doesn't understand, ushered them in. She said she found it horrifying when they did the Nazi salute. Now, Victorian Liberal leader John Pesuto has today released a 15-page letter defending his decision to dump Deeming from the party. He claims that she shared a platform with British anti-trans rights campaigner Kelly J. Keane Minshall, who he claims associates with far-right extremist groups and neo-Nazi activists. She denies this. He also claimed that Deeming met and published a video with activist Angie Jones on the very same day that... Angie Jones posted on Twitter, Nazis and women want to get rid of pedo filth, why don't you? Pesuto says, as a result of the case that he's mounted against this female politician, that her position is untenable. I am a strong supporter of free speech. But free speech doesn't include hate speech. It wasn't just that Moira had escorted uh, organisers through the precinct of the parliament. It wasn't just that Moira stayed at the protest when Nazis turned up. It was the celebration you can see on social media afterwards. Victorian Premier Daniel Andrews has also weighed in on this saga. That the Liberal Party you know, are increasingly becoming a nasty, hateful little rabble. You're either for equality or you're not. You're either a member of this government or you're a Liberal. The issue even spilled over federally in Canberra today. Obviously, any association with neo-Nazis is to be condemned. The Leader of the Opposition has failed to join his Victorian counterpart and take action to expel Ms Deeming from his party. He has failed to condemn the display of the Nazi salute on the steps of the Victorian Parliament. The he has been Marina. invisible. Since the weekend, he has done no media. Why, Mr Speaker? What is so hard about this? And it is equally condemned in that it would be used for political purposes in this place. It's a very, very poor reflection on you, if I might say. But Deeming says she has done nothing wrong and should be allowed to remain in the Liberal Party. I spoke to her today and she's planning to speak publicly in the next 24 hours to defend herself. In the meantime, she claims she at no point endorsed neo-Nazis who were at the event. She says she was even assaulted and injured by the left counter-protesters. 
Here's what she said in a statement that she's posted to Twitter. She said, I and the other attendees were horrified to see masked men all clad in black inside the buffer zone. After the event, I was informed that these masked men had in fact mounted Parliament House steps outside of of our view on the other end and performed a Nazi salute, and that members of the SFW group asked the police to make them leave, but were informed that the police had no powers to move them on due to Labor's removal of those powers. Now, Deeming argues, rightly, that she can't be held accountable for anyone who happens to show up at a public event. Now, there is no excuse to align yourself with neo-Nazis, none. But Deeming insists she hasn't done this. She says she was only there to support women and women's rights. And on the day of the protest to support her case, Deeming tweeted this. Disappointed with Victoria Police who let a bunch of masked men into the LWS buffer zone, terrifying women who were just trying to speak about their rights. Another attendee at this protest said that the women who were there were mostly older than 40 and that they looked like classic left-wing feminists. The speakers were passionate but not inflammatory and the focus was on safeguarding women's spaces and hard-won rights. It wasn't, according to this attendee, a hateful protest. The woman said, and I quote, if you can't safely say and hear what was said on Saturday, our society is doomed. It wasn't hateful. It wasn't dangerous. Now, this is not the first time neo-Nazis have gatecrashed pro-women's rallies to cause problems, just like we saw on Saturday. If John Pesuto can't prove his case that links Moira Deeming to neo-Nazis, if it does turn out that she was simply defending feminist rights, then Pesuto himself will be in the fight of his own political life. I won't comment on her comments about me, but I'm concerned about any member of my team uh, having any kind of association with somebody who, as I've said, has shared platforms. And the basis for that assertion is the material I've put to the party room. I'm confident, as I've said, that uh, the party understands why I'm doing this, and I don't want to preempt it too much. The party has to deal with this. There is a process. I respect that process now. I have been explaining to the Victorian people why I've done that, and I think they deserve to know why a leader has gone out there and uh, done this. So I think that's appropriate. But beyond that, I think you'll appreciate, and I think most reasonable people will understand that there's a process now. The party members, the members of the party room, will consider all of these matters.